Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Thursday, April 21st, 2022. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life and today I just have knitting to share with you all. You can find me online on Instagram at Noble Character Crafts and you can get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. You will find links to the places that you can find me in the description box below as well as the show notes for this episode. I'm hosting a year-long make-along on Instagram called the Make9 2022 Mal, and that's for you to join in the Make9 Challenge where you choose nine projects that you would like to make this year and then post a grid of those projects to Instagram. And then anytime that you post a picture of your progress or any finished objects from your board, you would be eligible to win a prize that I draw periodically throughout the year as long as you include the hashtag Make9 2022 Mal. I will have more details in the description box below if you're not familiar with this Mal and if you'd like to join in, it's never too late to join in. So please feel free to continue to join in throughout the year whenever you would like. I was generously donated a beautiful sock pattern by Ghazal Muhammad and the sock pattern is called the Abyss Socks. I will put a picture of it in here so that you can see how beautiful the texture and patterning is throughout this sock pattern and I'm just so grateful for you Gazel that you donated this pattern to us. Thank you so much. So I'm going to be gifting this pattern along with a skein of yarn that I showed off on the last episode. This was also donated to um, the podcast by a viewer of the podcast, Lindsay. So thank you so much again, Lindsay, for your donation. This is by Labiana May. It is on a sock weight, so a merino super sock base, which is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. And the colorway is called J. Kim is Grello. So this will be gifted along with the sock pattern. And the winner is Anne, who is at Handmade B on Instagram. Congratulations to you, Anne. If you would please get in contact with me with your full name and mailing address, I would be more than happy to get this off in the mail to you as soon as possible. And please also let me know your uh, either your Ravelry username or an email where you can be sent the sock pattern, whichever way you would like to be gifted that sock pattern, let me know and I will let Gosl know that information as well so she can send over that pattern to you. So congratulations again, Anne, and thanks to everybody who's continued to join in the Mal. It's been great to, uh, I just today went through and looked at uh, some more of the photos that have been posted on Instagram. I've been very inactive on Instagram lately and actually haven't posted anything since I recorded my last episode, which was a few weeks ago, like almost over three weeks ago. So anyway, I haven't been on Instagram very frequently lately, but it was great to go through and see the new pictures that have been posted in that hashtag. So thanks again to everybody who's continued to join in that now. It's been so fun to see the different progress and uh, the progress that you've made on your boards. Today I am wearing a shawl that I knitted back in 2019. This is called the Kayana Shawlette and it's a pattern by Jennifer Weissman. I actually knitted this as a gift that I gave to my husband's grandmother on her 100th birthday. I knit this in my own hand dyed yarn. It's on a worsted weight base, which is 100% superwash merino wool. And I think the colorway was called Tranquil, but I don't quite remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter because I don't sell my hand dyed yarn anyway, anymore anyway. So, but I did gift this to my grandmother-in-law on her 100th birthday, but she passed away last June, in June of 2021. And so after she passed, then uh, my husband's family gifted this or gave it back to me, <laughs> which of course I was more than happy to receive it and I have enjoyed wearing it. I just think that the pattern is really a simple, beautiful lace pattern. The majority of the top part is all just garter stitch. And even though it's a shawlette, it's not huge, but it's, it's very nice, you know, it's really wearable to drape it around like this. And I think the lace leafy patterning just shows off so beautifully. So I'm really, really happy to have this shawl. 
I have a few finished objects to share with you all today. Last time I recorded an episode, I was working on these scrappy socks and I was able to finish them up. There is a really pretty progress keeper on here that I was gifted by Emma of Potter and Bloom in our advent swap. And that's marking where I was last time. All of this yarn is also from Emma of Potter and Bloom and it's from our advent mini swap. So if you've watched before, you know I've used this yarn a few times now. I have put, I originally put these yarns into the yoke of a turtleneck sweater that I knit throughout the advent and then a few, it took me a while to finish it up, but I started it in back in December. And I striped all of these colors that she had sent to me in the yoke of that sweater. And then I also striped them into the excavation blanket that I've shown off before. So they're in that project as well. And then I decided to make a pair of scrappy socks with all of the leftovers that I had. There were three mini skeins that Emma sent to me that I wasn't sure if they had nylon in them or not. There were two by Malabrigo, and I'm pretty sure Malabrigo doesn't have nylon in their sock base. And then there was one mini skein that was just a singles, you know, it was just a singles yarn. And so it probably didn't have nylon in it as well. So I decided not to use those in these socks, but otherwise I just used up all of the leftovers that I had from the mini skeins that she sent to me. I used up all except two. I got all done with the toe and I still had a little bit of this ending color as well as two um, other mini skein leftovers that I will show you in a minute. I've used those in another project. But anyway, I was so happy with how these turned out. I think they're so beautiful. I cast on 64 stitches. I did a two by two ribbing for 20 rounds, I believe. And then I just did plain stockinette for the leg. It's probably around 70 rounds, but I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset for the heels. And then for the toe or the, for the um, foot, I again included my slip stitch detail along the sole of the foot as I have been doing for quite a while now. And that is just basically the same pattern that I would do on the heel. So I slip one, knit one across one round just on the bottom of the foot. And then the next round I knit all of those stitches and alternate between those two rounds. So it's the same pattern as you do on a slip stitch heel flap. But I just do that for about 20 rounds on the, just on the sole of the ball of the foot because that's where I get holes in my socks most frequently. So that has really seemed to be very effective in preventing me from getting holes in my socks as quickly. Did a rounded toe and Kitchener the toes together. I knit these on US 02 millimeter needles. And I just absolutely love how they turned out. I do actually have a few tiny, tiny little bits of some of the first colors because when I was knitting my turtleneck sweater, I was holding my yarn double to make a DK weight. And when I first started doing that, I was winding off a little, I was I made two balls, like a little tiny ball and then a larger ball. And I would knit my sweater from those. And then I had a little tiny nugget left from the smaller ball. <laughs> but then as I went through the month of December, I realized it would work out better if I would just pull the yarn from both the inside and the outside of a wound ball. And so for the later, as the month went on, I was able to use up all that yarn because I didn't have another little extra mini. But anyway, I have the tiniest little scraps of bits from some of these first colorways and I'll definitely use those. As you may know, I love to use every little inch of yarn that I have left over if I can. So anyway. I'm very, very happy with how these turned out though. I think they're so beautiful. I love the colors and how they work up together. So like I said, I had a few, two extra minis left over from what Emma had sent to me and I wanted to use them up in another pair of socks. So I decided to make a shorty pair of socks since summer is coming up and I thought maybe I would like to wear some shorties. I've recently been wearing tennis shoes throughout the day because I have a sore ankle <laughs> and it helps me to have, um, I think I have a bit of tendonitis in one of my feet. Anyway, it really helps for me to wear tennis shoes throughout the day with some arch supports because I have really high instep. So anyway, that's really helped me, but I thought as summer is approaching, it might be nice to be able to have some shorty socks to wear with my tennis shoes. 
So I thought I would make up these socks and I absolutely love how they turned out. I cast on 60 stitches. I did a two by one ribbing for just 15 rounds. And then I went immediately into a um, slip stitch heel flap and gusset. The blue yarn that I used is by Yarn B. It's called Color Idol, which is a discontinued yarn, unfortunately. But I got this when it was on clearance for only like $2 for a 100 gram skein, a little over $2, but really, really reasonably priced. The colorway is called Lapis Stone. It is a 50% merino wool, 30% nylon, and 20% acrylic base. And I really love the yarn, so I'm disappointed that it has been discontinued, but I'm glad I snagged a few skeins of it. After I finished the heel flap and gusset, then I started doing a five by one ribbing on the top of the foot. So I knit five purled one across the top. And as soon as I finished the gusset decreases, then I striped in these last two mini skeins that I had left over. And I just really love how that looks. Again, I did that slip stitch section on the ball of the foot and did the rounded toe and Kitchener the toes. Per usual, I just love how these look. They fit really, really well. So I think I'll probably be making some more shorties coming up. I'm assuming that I'll like these. I haven't worn them yet, but I am. Think I'm, I think I will really like wearing them in the summer. So I'm happy with how those turned out, and so happy to have used up almost all of the scraps that I have, or the minis that I got from Emma. So that was super fun. All right, I only have two works in progress that I have to share with you. I've been pretty monogamous or pretty focused on my projects that I have right now. Last time I recorded an episode, I had shown the sunflower blanket afghan that I'm crocheting for my niece and I have not touched that since I recorded my last episode. I have been focusing all of my time, all of my knitting time where I can focus on a project on my Ellie cardigan that I have shown off so many times. It is being held in this beautiful bag from Tanny, Tanny Casey. And I have made really good progress, but I am quite shocked that I'm still not done with it. I mean, just considering all of the time that I put into it, I mean, it is a, it is a intricate project and I have made a lot of progress on it, but I'm kind of just shocked at it not being done yet. It just seems like it is taking forever, but I'm really, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm still enjoying working on it. I really am. I am thoroughly enjoying working on it. So it's all right. I'm not going to, I'm trying, I'm going to try not to go into too much detail because I know if you've watched other episodes, you've heard it all because <laughs> I've been working on this project for so long, but I'll just hold it up so you can see how it's looking try to hold it up as best I can. So here is the progress. There's one sleeve done and I'm on the second sleeve. Last time I recorded, I was still working on the body. Here is a cute little progress keeper from Tracy of Grizzly Knits, and that's marking where I was last time. So I was almost done with the body. I just had a few more inches to complete on the body, and then I did the one by one twisted ribbing for about three inches, I think. I just did it until I thought I was, it looked good. And then I did a sewn tubular bind off for the bottom of the ribbing here. And then last time I recorded an episode, I had also already started the first sleeve and this progress keeper is marking where I was last time I recorded on the first sleeve. And so I was able to finish the first sleeve. I again did my own thing on this pattern. I did not do any sleeve decreases throughout the sleeve until I got to the cuff where I did knit two together all the way around. And then I just did the one by one twisted ribbing for I think 15 rounds on the sleeve cuff. Again, did the sewn tubular bind off on the cuff. And I just love how this is fitting. It, it fits so wonderfully. And I'm adding in those pretty beads, which is not in the pattern, but it's so much fun. And I absolutely love how that is looking. Isn't it pretty? 
I'll eventually take out that green waste yarn, but I'm just leaving it in until I'm done with both sleeves, just to make sure that they're perfectly matched, of course. So here is the second sleeve. You can see the light, I have a light green strand running through the waist, the stitches that were on hold before I picked up the sleeve. That was what, that's the waste yarn that was holding those stitches. And I've done several repeats of that lace pattern. I'm about halfway maybe on this sleeve. Let's see if I can compare them. Not quite halfway probably, but it's coming along. I am knitting these on 12 inch circulars. And I just have a, I do the lace repeat nine times around and it's working up really easy. It's, it's really fun to work on. I do have to keep track of the pattern still, the lace repeat. And, you know, I keep, I keep a marker where I am in the lace repeat, but you know, I have it pretty well memorized at this point, but I still do just keep my marker on the lace repeat so that I can not get lost in the pattern, of course, but it's really so much fun to work on. And I really love how it's looking. Oh, I also decided to make my own buttons for this. So I only have one attached so far, but I wanted to put one on to see how I would like it. So this is a Dorset cross wheel button and I've made these before for other cardigans that I have made. And I just absolutely love how they look. I think they're so beautiful and I love having buttons that are perfectly matched. The you, I'm using the same yarn that I'm knitting the cardigan with to make the buttons. And it really does help to have um, the buttons made out of yarn because they're really, they don't slip out of the holes as easily as say a metal or plastic button might. So there you can see it buttoned. But I've only done, I've only attached that first one and I need a total of 11 buttons. So I've been working on those as well. I have a few more made up that I've just been keeping in this little pouch. So I'll show you what that looks like, not attached. Maybe you can get a better idea of what it looks like. I will link in the description box below the tutorial that I followed on YouTube to learn how to make these buttons. They're really very simple and so much fun to make. So there you can just see what it looks like better. Here's the back side, and I just leave the yarn attached, even though in the tutorial she says not to, but I do, because I'm not gonna be taking these off of my cardigan. I just leave the yarn that I made the button with attached, and then I will sew that to the cardigan. And I'll show you what I use as my ring to make the button. I've just been using these really simple copper washers. I I think I ordered these on Amazon, but you can also just use any type of a washer that you could pick up at a hardware store. And you just use that as your ring to wrap the yarn around. Again, check out that YouTube tutorial if you're interested in learning how to make these buttons. I just think they're so much fun and it's such a fun addition to be able to add to a handmade garment to make your own buttons too. I just think that really makes it special. And of course they're a perfect match to your garment. So I really love making them. So I'm excited to add those to this cardigan as well. But I'm really hopeful that next time I record, this will be finished. I don't have, you know, considering how much I've worked on, I don't have too much left to go. Just half of a sleeve. The button band is all done. I'm still a little leery about whether it's going to block out because you can see that that button band is really wavy looking. I have had some suggestions about adding in some ribbon on the inside, which is a great idea. I have done that before on other cardigans, a steaked cardigan. I did that on one of my steaked cardigans. And so that might, uh, that I can see how that would be really helpful maybe to add in some ribbon to give it some stability. I'm just really hopeful that it will block out and lay flat. So hopefully it will be all done the next time I record an episode. I was really hoping to have it done in time for Easter, but missed that mark. <laughs> I could have used it on Easter because it was super cold here still. 
uh, on Sunday was Easter. But we actually didn't end up going to church anyway because my husband is not, wasn't feeling well. So he is better now. But anyway, I only have one other work in progress. I have, besides working on that sweater, I've just had a pair of simple socks on the go lately. And I'm holding a new pair in this bag that I made myself. And I am using the yarn that I showed off on my last episode that was gifted to me by Nicole, one of the viewers of this channel. And it is a yarn by Premier Yarns. It's called Debra, the Deborah Norville Collection Serenity Sock Weight. And the color weight is called Pink Sugar. It's a fingering weight base, 50% superwash merino wool, 25% rayon made from bamboo, and 25% nylon. And I just love these colors in this yarn. I thought they were so pretty and they would be fun to work on in the spring. So I wanted to cast them on. And I'm a bit tangled here. This is the mini I'm gonna be using for at least the heels, maybe the toes too. This is from, um, this is one of the things that I kept from that huge box of yarn that I was gifted by Joy that I gave away last year. If you watched throughout the year, I gave away lots of the yarn that Joy had doni donated. And this was one of the things that I had kept. It was a mini set by Sweet Fiber. And this one is called Smoky Lilac. It's an 80% superwash merino 25, I'm sorry, 20% nylon base. And I think that that will go really well together with this yarn. For these socks, I cast on 60 stitches. I'm using US zero two millimeter needles again. And I did a two by one ribbing for I think it was 17 rows. And then I started doing, I've never done this before. I started doing a one by one, one by one broken rib. So I knit one round all the way around. And then the next round I knit one purl one all the way around. My daughter, I was asking my daughter, or my daughter was asking me what I was working on. And I was explaining to her what I was making. And I said, this is a one by one broken rib pattern. And she goes, oh, that sounds painful. <laughs> I never thought of it before. It was just so cute how she said it. Anyway, I am, I'm really enjoying working on these since it's, you know, it's a pretty simple pattern and I can easily just look at the neck, the previous row if I don't know where I'm at and I can tell which row I need to do, of course, because it's just really simple. So those are working up really beautifully, I think. I love the marled look of this yarn and yet how it's striping is so pretty. This is a progress keeper that I made using an old necklace from my mom. So those are super fun and easy to work on and just a nice project to have if I need a mindless project. Like while I'm teaching the kids, I usually have these with me or if I'm waiting for something, I'll take those with me. So those are working up well and enjoyable to work on. So that's all I have been working on lately. I've tried to stay focused on that LA cardigan because I really want to get it done, but it just seems to be taking forever. I also received a huge box of yarn that was so generously gifted to me. Again, last time I recorded, I showed you that huge box of yarn that Lindsay had donated. And then I got a message from another viewer of this episode or this channel named Joan, and she wanted to send me over quite a bit of yarn as well. So I want to show off what she sent me. Now, a lot of it is packaged in plastic bags, so it may be a little crinkly. Um, I'll try to cut out what I can, but she sent me so much yarn. I'm just very, very blown away by your generosity, Joan. Okay, the first, a lot of these are like sweater quantities of yarn. This is definitely a sweater quantity. This whole bag is filled with skeins of this yarn. This is California brand. Um, it is a 52% cotton, 48% acrylic base, 
These are all 50 gram skeins. I'm not sure of the weight of them all. I'll have to figure that out. It's um, 125 meters for 50 grams. If you can figure that out on your own, <laughs> I'm not sure if that would be like sport, maybe, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a really fun textured yarn in a pretty cool pink or purple, kind of a bluish periwinkle type color. So that's absolutely beautiful. Next yarn she sent me is similar in color and uh, makeup and weight really. And there's quite a few of these as well. I'll show you, they're in this bag along with another yarn, but see there's quite a few of these little purple skeins. These are called, it says imported by Unger, William Unger and Company, New York, New York. Italian cotton, made in Italy. And it's just 100% cotton, but it has a really cool, I don't know if you can be able to tell, it has this kind of nubby texture to it. So that's really fun. It's a very thin weight. I would assume that's a fingering weight. And then the other one that's in this bag is by Pinguoen. Hmm, I don't know how to say that. And um, let's see, this one is, oh, this is a DK weight, it says. 70% acrylic and 30% linen. Really cool color as well, I love that. And the texture, again, is just really fun. And there's how many of these? One, two, six, one, two, three, four, five, six of those. So that's very generous. The next is really a fun yarn as well. Again, definitely a sweaters quantity there. This one is called Carrie Tweed. It's by Oltex and comes from Massachusetts. It's made in France though. It is 15% kid mohair, 15% mohair, 40% acrylic, 30% wool. And it's 97 yards to 50 grams. So that would be about a worsted weight, I would guess, right? I think so. It's a really pretty gray tweed. Again, a very fun texture to the yarn. It's um like really highly spun, I guess. So it got a high twist in it. And I just love the tweed as well. It's so pretty. And it's got all these little, you see the fuzzies coming out of it? It's really a fun yarn. Okay, she sent me this baggie full of this gold metallic yarn. You can see there's quite a few of those in there as well. Six of them. And this is by that same company that the corally colored yarn was in. Pinguin. Pinguin? <laughs> not sure. This is 60% viscose or rayon and then 40% polyester. And let's see, these are just 20 gram little cakes and they're 175 yards, so probably a lace weight. I'm not really sure, probably. This is also made in France. Color 11, I guess it is, but really a fun metallic yarn that you could add to a project to make it really fun and sparkly. And let's see, in this big bag, I have a few different yarns. They're all neutral in color, and I'll try to go through them. The one I have the most of is this. Let's see, I have two, four, six, eight, I believe, of these. It is also a DK weight. It's 80% acrylic, 10% angora, and 10% lamb's wool. They're 25 gram skeins. And just in this beautiful white color. It's beautiful halo on this yarn as well. <laughs> really super fuzzy. And then we have some, this is called Georges Picard Qualité. And it's a 65% rayon, 18% cotton, and 17% acrylic. Um, let's see. 
I don't really know the yardage. I can't see the yardage on this, but it's a pretty thin, I'm assuming fingering, maybe even lace weight yarn. But this, there's just two of these. And then there are three of these, two in one shade, one in one other shade. These are both, or these are all Bernat Pearl Spun, 50% nylon, 25% linen, 25% viscose. They're 50 gram skeins. This one is called Natural, and these two are called Flax. So really pretty colors there. It has a neat shine to it. Again, a really cool textured yarn. She also sent me these fun little sticky notes. Those are so beautiful, cute. And lastly is this beautiful mini skein fade set. It's by Sweet Georgia Party of Five. And there's these beautiful, five, these five beautiful colors in cauldron, charcoal, slate, silver, and snowfall. They're all on an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon base, tough love sock base, but isn't that gorgeous? That is such a pretty fade. So thank you again, Joan. That was so generous of you to send me all of this yarn. I'm just so feel so blessed to have received all of these goodies from you. Thank you so much. I just can't tell you how appreciative I am of your generosity. Thank you so much. So that's all I have to share with you all today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you really enjoyed watching this episode and I hope you all are doing really well. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you haven't already, I would appreciate that so much. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.